Step 2. Three-node entangled network. In the previous step, we talked about how to establish entanglement between two nodes of a network. Here, we're going to talk about experiments that scaled it up by adding another node, and they built a three-node network. So the two experiments that we're going to cover are the following. The first one was performed by Pompili and his uh, col collaborators in 2021 at the University of Delft. Their physical system that, that was used was nitrogen vacancy centers in diamond. And they managed to demonstrate distribution of a 3-qubit GHZ state, as well as performing entanglement swapping at the middle node and establishing entanglement between non-neighboring nodes of their network. And the second experiment used it to consume this entanglement by showing that they can teleport between non-neighboring nodes. It was performed by the same group. The first author was Hermans, and they used the same physical system. So really, the first experiment is about distributing the entanglement between non-neighboring networks, and the second experiment was about making sufficiently many improvements to the setup so that a teleportation can be achieved between these non-neighboring nodes. Let's see how the setup uh, looks like. Unlike in the previous step, where the nodes were separated by a large distance of over a kilometer, here they were placed in labs which were relatively close to each other. The distance between the two labs was 30 meters, and lab number one contained a single node, while lab number two contained two nodes of the network. And nodes two and three were separated by two meters. Each node contained some qubits. The first node contained a single qubit, in the form of an electron spin qubit, called the communication qubit. The second node in lab 2 contained two qubits. Again, one communication qubit in the form of an electron spin qubit, and also what's called a memory qubit. This is the nuclear spin qubit in the NV center in Diamond. And node 3 contained a single qubit in the form of a communication qubit. Let's talk about the difference between these communication qubits and memory qubits. The communication qubit, as we said, is uh, represented by the electron spin that's uh, captured by the vacancy in the diamond lattice. This qubit can be addressed optically, which means that it can also emit light. Therefore, the communication qubit is used to create spin-photon entanglement, or entanglement between the stationary quantum memory and the flying qubit uh, of the photon. Hence, it's used for communication, therefore the name. Uh, the problem with this qubit is that it's quite susceptible to dephasing. The memory qubit, on the other hand, is represented by these gray circles, which are carbon-13 nuclear spins. These, on the other hand, are not addressed optically, but using microwave signals, and they cannot be used to generate remote entanglement. Hence the name, memory qubit. On the other hand, they've got extremely long coherence times, so they're very good for storing quantum states. Now let's see how the protocol worked. How can we use three communication qubits and one memory qubit in order to establish either a three-qubit GHZ state or entangled bell pair between non-neighboring nodes of the network? Here was the setup. We have the nodes one with the communication qubit, node two with the communication qubit and the memory qubit, and node three with a single communication qubit. We said that only the communication qubits can be used to establish entanglement between uh, neighboring nodes. That means that the entanglement can, uh, at the link level can be, must be generated sequentially. First, node 1 and node 2 establish link level entanglement using MIM architecture. That means that both of them emit a photon, which is entangled with their respective communication qubits, and they meet uh, somewhere along the uh, link at the BSA, where they interfere. Once node 1 and node 2 are entangled, Node 2 performs a swap. So it swaps the state of the communication qubit with the state of the memory qubit. This keeps the link level entanglement between node 1 and 2, but at node 2, it's the memory qubit that's entangled with the communication qubit at node 1. Now the, now the communication qubit at node 2 is free to establish link level entanglement with node 3. Once that is done, we have the basic ingredients all in place. Now let's follow option number 1 and that's how to establish the uh, three-qubit GHZ state. What node 2 has to perform is an entangling operation between its communication qubit and its memory qubit. 
After that is done, Node 2 measures out the communication qubit. If the measurement is successful, then communication qubit and Node 1, memory qubit and Node 2, and communication qubit and Node 1 are all part of a GHZ state, a 3-qubit multipartite entangled state. The generation rate was approximately 1 GHZ state for every 90 seconds. And the fidelity of this state was 0 0.538 plus or minus uh, 18 in the last two uh, digits. The option number two was performing an entanglement swapping operation at node two. So we know how to do that. We have to perform a bell basis measurement at node two on the communication qubit and the memory qubit. And that establishes an end-to-end -end pair between node one and node three. The generation rate was a little, little bit better. It was approximately one bell pair for every 40 seconds, and the fidelity was around 0.551. Now let's talk about how we can actually consume such entanglement. This is the second experiment performed by the group. Here we start where we've left off with experiment one. We established an end-to-end -end bell pair between communication qubits at node one and node three. But this time we need another qubit that can be used for teleportation. So node three can now also access its memory qubit. So what happens first? Node 3 transfers the entanglement, transfers the state from its communication qubit to its memory qubit. So it's the communication qubit at node 1 and the memory qubit at node 3 that are entangled. Then node 3 prepares uh, its communication qubit in the desired state that the node is trying to teleport to node 1. The various states that were teleported in this way were all the plus one and minus one eigenstates of the Pauli matrices. So they were the states zero, one, and then equal superpositions of zero and one in the form of plus state, minus state, plus i state, and minus i state. All of these were teleported, and the average fidelity was as high as 0 0.688. And the generation rate was approximately one in 100 seconds. So that covers the experiments using NV centers in diamond. In the next step, we're going to look at purely photonic experiments.